Sputnik. On October 4, 1957, as I recall it, the Russians uh, launched a fairly heavy object uh, into orbit. History changed on October 4, 1957, when a Russian R-7 rocket soared into space carrying the priceless Sputnik 1 satellite. The rocket released Sputnik into Earth's orbit, making it the first satellite in all of human history to be outside of Earth's atmosphere. Sputnik marked the beginning of a new age, called the Space Age, and America had a special reaction to the Russian advancement in space that led to developments in many fields, such as politics, technology, military, science, and education. America reacted to this in taking space travel and exploration to a new level by creating an organization named NASA. All the works into an unknown frontier of space might not have ever happened if it was not for Sputnik and the reaction of the United States that followed it. The word Sputnik means something traveling with the traveler. In this case, the traveler is Earth traveling through space and the companion traveling with it is the satellite. Here an artist's conception of how the feat was accomplished. A three-stage rocket. Number one, the booster in the class of an intercontinental missile. Its weight estimated at 50 tons. The smaller second stage took over at 5,000 miles an hour and carried on to the highest point reached. 500 miles up, the artificial moon is boosted to a speed counterbalancing the pull of gravity and released. We were very disappointed when the first one was launched because we knew darn well that we could launch a satellite any time we were told to. On the night of October 4, 1957, Sputnik passed the United States twice in easy detection range before anyone in authority knew of its existence. The United States and the Soviet Union had a massive confusion and suspicion between them due to the prevailing Cold War which triggered both of the countries to advance in space technology and gain more power than each other. Earlier to a Sputnik launch, the United States and the Soviet Union had announced to the world on separate occasions that each would put a small, Earth-circling satellite into orbit. The Americans and so much of the rest of the Western world paid little or no attention to the Russians' plans, but were eagerly looking forward to the launch of the first U.S. satellite. Had it been on schedule, the Vanguard, the U.S. satellite, would have been launched November 1957. Unfortunately, Vanguard was 8 to 9 months behind schedule. Because as you remember, the United States was, was really shaken to, believe, to recognize that this little contraption uh, launched by the, by the Soviets was happily going across the United States several times a day and we couldn't do a thing about it. Sputnik gave the Soviet Union a head start in the space exploration, which was an alarming advance. As a technical achievement, Sputnik caught the world's attention and the American public off guard. Its size of approximately 183 pounds was more impressive than Vanguard's intended 3.5 pound payload. In addition, the public feared that the Soviets' ability to launch satellites also translated to the capability to launch ballistic missiles that could carry nuclear weapons from Europe to the United States. On the same evening of the Sputnik launch, Senate Majority Leader Lyndon B. Johnson pondered over the Soviets' triumph and he recollected, Now somehow, in some new way, the sky seemed almost alien. I also remember the profound shock of realizing that it might be possible for another nation to achieve technological superiority over this great country of ours. A Gallup poll discovered that U.S. prestige has eroded in six of the seven foreign cities included in its survey, and within weeks there was a decline in public enthusiasm for siding with the U.S. and NATO in Germany, France, and Italy. U.S. President Eisenhower and his administration had to move quickly to restore confidence at home and prestige abroad. As the first reaction to the apparent Soviet leadership in space technology, the White House announced that the United States would test launch a Project Vanguard booster on December 6, 1957, but it disintegrated in flames three feet above the platform, 
and on the next test on February 5th, 1958, the Vanguard launch vehicle reached an altitude of about four miles and it exploded. This shattered people's hopes. You know, uh, flop Nick and, uh, you know, excuse Nick and uh, there, there's just all these mocking headlines and there's this huge, huge failure. During this crisis, the Army featured Werner von Braun, a rocket scientist and a German immigrant to the United States, and his rocket team with plans to launch Explorer 1, a new satellite. We've been assigned the mission of launching a scientific Earth satellite. And we will use the Jupiter C configuration as a carrier that we developed along with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I promised the Secretary of the Army that we would be ready in 90 days or less. Let's go, Warner. On January 31st, 1958, the Explorer 1 satellite was successfully launched on Cape Canaveral, Florida, into Earth's orbit. Explorer 1 was a great success, and on a later day, Juan Braun, Van Allen, and William H. Pickering held up a full-scale model of Explorer 1 as shown in the signature photograph. When uh, we got the go-ahead to launch Explorer 1, um, we took enormous pride in that. I really believe that Explorer 1 was the first uh, landmark of space exploration because although it followed Sputnik, Explorer 1 had science instruments on it. And so it really marks the first use of space for scientific exploration. This reaction countered the Soviet Union's Sputnik launch, but was definitely not enough to prove that the United States was more technologically advanced than the Soviet Union. Dangers and challenges in further space explorations demanded a lot of research and design. The real limitations in the launch vehicle business, the booster rocket as we then called it, we really didn't have any. We had been using sounding rockets, small things that went up and uh, uh, accumulated information and uh, telemetered it back to the United States, to the ground, but uh, we didn't have anything that really would lift very much with any degree of, of uh, surety. President Eisenhower wanted a civilian organization that would build and launch rockets into space and take the United States into a more advanced level in space technology without increasing Cold War tension with the Soviet Union. In February 1958, President Eisenhower asked his science advisor, James R. Killian, to convene the President's Science Advisory Committee to come up with a plan and achieve this goal. This committee came up with a recommendation to rename NACA, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which was a technologically competent organization established in 1915 to NASA. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and to expand it by placing all non-military efforts of space exploration under it. During the summer of 1958, Congress passed the National Aeronautics and Space Act, and the President signed it into law. President Eisenhower nominated T. Keith Glennon, President of the Care Institute of Technology, Cleveland, to be NASA's first administrator. NASA was started on October 1, 1958, less than a year after Sputnik was launched. Creating NASA as a reaction to the Soviet advancement in space was a tremendous success in the area of space technology. In the later years, NASA worked on a great mission that was given by President Kennedy. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. In 1969, NASA finally landed a man on the moon and brought him back safely, leaving the Soviet Union far behind. And that was a great moment in history. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. From the words of G. Scott Hubbard, former director of the NASA Ames Research Center, what all these things in the United States, from Explorer 1 to the Apollo moon landings, have happened anyway? Maybe or maybe not. One thing is certain, the spark that ignited a global change was a tiny silver ball orbiting the Earth in 1957.